The audio confession was recorded on June 2nd, 1969. I repeat, this audio recording has never been heard by the American people. You are hearing it for the first time on True News. Here is the never heard before audio of John McCain confessing that he was a war criminal and thanking his communist captors for their medical treatment of his war injuries. To the Vietnamese people and the government of the DRVN, from John Sidney McCain, 624787, Lieutenant Commander, U.S. Navy, born 29 August 1936, Panama, home state, Florida, shot down 26 October 1967, A4E aircraft. I, as a U.S. Airman, am guilty of crimes against the Vietnamese country and people. I have bombed their cities, towns, and villages and caused many injuries, even death, to the people of Vietnam. I was captured in the capital city of Hanoi while attacking it. After I was captured, I was taken to the hospital in Hanoi, where I received very good medical treatment. I was given an operation on my leg, which allowed me to walk again, and a cast on my right arm, which was badly broken in three places. The doctors were very good, and they knew a great deal about the practice of medicine. I remained in the hospital for some time and regained much of my health and strength. Since I arrived in the camp of detention, I have received humane and lenient treatment. I received different treatment and food, even though I came here as an aggressor, and the people who I injured have much difficulty in their living standards. I wish to express my deep gratitude for my kind treatment, and I will never forget this kindness extended to me. And again, that is an audio recording of John McCain as a prisoner of war. That recording was broadcast on North Vietnamese radio in the late 1960s to demoralize American troops in Vietnam. This recording has never been heard by the American people. The investigative journalists who brought this audio to True News, is in the studio right now with Doc Burkhardt and Edward Zoll and myself. His name is Charles Johnson. He is the founder of WeSearchArt.com and GotNews.com. Charles, welcome to True News. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Charles, I know right now that the True News audience is in a state of shock by what they just heard. What we just heard was the voice of John McCain in a broadcast on North Vietnamese Communist Radio in the late 60s, confessing that he was a war criminal and praising the North Vietnamese Communists for the excellent care they had given him. And I know our audience is shaking their heads in disbelief, wondering. Is this, is this for real? How do we know this is John McCain? Charles, you, you convinced me and the True News staff that this is an authentic recording. And we decided to, to release it tonight. That's why this program is being re- released somewhat late in the day. Because we had a a lot of discussions today about whether to release this audio. I mean, my gosh, we're talking about John McCain. Right. And for me, I, it, this has been a very uh, difficult choice to, to make, a very difficult decision to make. Do we release this audio? Why are you certain that this audio is authentic, that this is the voice of John McCain? We obtained the uh, the audio recording from the National Archives. It is... The National Archives in Washington, D.C.? Correct. And it was actually mislabeled um, while you, it was there. You're telling me that the National Archives of the United States of America had a recording of John McCain on North Vietnamese radio? That's right. And what's more is that this, this broadcast comes from the Foreign Broadcast Information Service. Which was a branch. That was of, the CIA. This branch of the CIA. They monitored right. all shortwave radio. 
That's right. And so for, for and me, they were out of Panama for a long time. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. That's right. Yeah. And so for 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 a very long time, uh, there had been a number of U.S. servicemen who had claimed that they had heard John McCain uh, essentially being doing a Tokyo Rose style betrayal of his country, and these servicemen were more or less ignored. They were marginalized. And they were sort of cast aside as as kooks and cranks, and so I, I had known that these this audio was out there, and so about six or seven months ago at Got News we put up a bounty uh, to anyone who could go and prove it, um, and we were we did this in the context of investigating and vetting John McCain more fully. Uh, John McCain has a history of being on sort of the wrong side of a lot of military conflicts. Notably, and most recently, the Syria conflict in which he hired a woman who lied about having a PhD and who was being paid by the Syrian rebels, Elizabeth Obagi, to advise him on foreign policy-related issues. She still works in his office. He also gets his photograph taken with the wrong people in a war, like ISIS jihadists. That's right. And Elizabeth Obagi is the woman who introduced uh, John McCain to those ISIS-supported rebels. And then he um, also showed up in Ukraine, in Kiev, and encourage the people of Ukraine to overthrow the elected government. That's right. And he is, he's also pictured in Ukraine with Obagi. And so I first encountered Ms. Obagi when I was reporting about how she um, had a history of uh, fabricating a PhD and she was connected to the neoconservative think tank, the Institute for the Study of War. And so I had heard all these rumors for many years of John McCain, you know, as a songbird. Um, there was a long kind of history of this. And I, um, you know, I wanted to do something about it. I wanted to go. And, and what was interesting was I had heard for a long time in the researcher community that this material was out there. Um, there was interviews that John McCain had done in French uh, or for, for French broadcast. There were interviews he'd done with other kind of communist outlets. And it was never sort of disclosed to the larger public. And I think it's important for people to understand this. This is, you know, this is a breach of, you know, the U.S. military code of conduct. This is a form of treason. And this is not, you know, a lot of people are of the view this, this could have been made under duress. John McCain gave other interviews, such as to the Cuban, uh, Cuban Journalist Association propaganda operation called Granma, we have, and I've, I've sent over to Edward. And I don't know about this one. Yeah. What was this interview? This was another interview he did. It was a very matter of fact, describing his treatment uh, while he when was, he was. He gave this interview while he was a POW? Correct. To the Cuban uh, news agency, correct. Yeah. So, um, is so it is this an audio or, or this a is print? A, a print recording one? And I've sent it over to. to it's been translated. To Edward. We have the translation. Mm -hmm. Do yes, you have it do. right now, Edward? Um, yeah, how how long is it? It's uh, it's probably about fifteen minute read or so. Oh, okay. We're not. Well. Yeah, we yeah. can't read Maybe the whole we thing. Do another story. All right, on but that. we'll we'll release it. We'll we'll put it out on our website. You know, after World War II, the U.S. government prosecuted and convicted and in prison Tokyo Rose. That's right. Tokyo Rose, the famous traitor in World War II who made radio broadcasts yes. in the in the Pacific to demoralize American troops during and, World War II. And if I remember right, they made a really big deal about it too. They they put paraded her out uh, in all the different media forums back then and made a really big deal out of prosecuting her as well. That's right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's important to note here that uh, Pulitzer Prize winner Sidney Schaumburg, uh, New York Times, you know, late real reporter who recently passed away, he had always talked about this sort of cover up that had gone on, that we had left people behind in Vietnam. And he was more or less ignored despite winning the Pulitzer Prize for the killing fields, uh, which he did, did on the genocide in Cambodia. He was more or less ignored on this issue because the U.S. government didn't want to acknowledge, you know, they very much wanted heroes out of the Vietnam War. And John McCain, you know, good-looking, boyish, you know, this, you know, despite being relatively older at the time, um, the, uh, you know, the son of an admiral and the grandson of an admiral sort of fit that to a T. And there were lots of photo ops, and people wanted to believe a lot of the stories that were being told about John McCain's military service, and they continue to believe that. Well, you know, Charles, it, it, I, I'm in my 18th year of radio, and... In the early years of this program, True News listeners who served in Vietnam would call me. Some personally visited our office, others emailed and said, look, 
a big story is John McCain. He, he was a Tokyo Rose, and you need to do this story. I would never touch it because it was like, you're talking about John McCain. I am not doing, I am not doing a, a report based on hearsay. Right, and how do you prove it? Yeah, it was hearsay. I had somebody saying, I know that I know that, that he was a Tokyo Rose. And, but this is the first time the actual recording of a North Vietnamese communist radio program has been heard with John McCain confessing to being a war criminal and praising his captors for the excellent way they treated him. We don't know how many times that recording was rebroadcast over and over and over on North Vietnamese radio. That's right. There are estimates that it was many as 30 times, maybe more. Um, but we don't, we don't really know. We know that our servicemen heard it in the jungles of Vietnam, that it was used as a propaganda victory. And what was interesting to me is, um, you know, I remember reading an interview with John, one of John McCain's captors uh, during, during the 2008 election, a Vietnamese you know, person who, who liked John McCain. He actually said all these favorable things about John McCain. It was sort of this interview of a torturer coming and being friends with torturee. But the, the Vietnamese officer was insistent that John McCain had not been tortured, that John McCain had been very cooperative. And this was sort of the first time I had, I had ever seen any documentation of it. And we've sent, we had somebody actually over in Vietnam already, and we're, we're going to be pulling out more material as well. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be a very interesting story. I mean, my you know my interest is your interest, and part of the reason you know got got to be friendly with Edward was you know my view is that we should just let people know the truth and they can judge for themselves what they would do in that circumstance. I mean, the, there are many examples of American servicemen, um, including the the subject of the film Unbroken, um, uh, Mr. Zamperini, who you know did not do propaganda broadcasts for the Japanese. Um, there are many POWs who for years have wanted to tell the story about John McCain and John McCain as a, as a, um, as a member of the government has worked to seal the, the records of POWs, including his own. And it's about time to actually see some of those things. I mean, Why are is, the records sealed? It's a great question. I mean, so this is, you know, he, he has, he has worked to seal the records of all POWs. Correct. Correct. And that would include his own. So Ron Unz over at Unz Review has written about this. Um, it's a UNZ for you know yeah, listeners out there interested in this, and he's written a number of articles about this that that, that show that John McCain worked diligently to make it so that the the re- the records of servicemen who were POWs are not revealed. All right, Charles, I want to play the audio again. What we did now the first time what what you heard was the actual raw audio as it was given to us. I asked our team if they could enhance the uh, audio level and bring it up a little bit. This is a very old recording. Again, this is what, 1960, 67, or was it 67 or 69? 69. 69, 1969. It's a very old recording. So we, we, I'm going to play this time a, a slightly enhanced audio version that may help you hear this a little bit better. Here it is again. The Vietnamese people and the government of the DRVN from John Sidney McCain, 624787, Lieutenant Commander, U.S. Navy, born 29 August 1936, Panama, home state, Florida, shot down 26 October 1967, A4E aircraft. I, as a U.S. Airman, am guilty of crimes against the Vietnamese country and people. I have bombed their cities, towns, and villages and caused many injuries, even death, to the people of Vietnam. I was captured in the capital city of Hanoi while attacking it. After I was captured, I was taken to the hospital in Hanoi, where I received urgent medical treatment. I was given an operation on my leg, which allowed me to walk again in a cast on my right arm, which was badly broken in three places. The doctors were very good, and they knew a great deal about the practice of medicine. I remained in the hospital for some time and regained much of my health and strength. Since I arrived in the camp of detention, I have received humane and lenient treatment. I received medical treatment and food, even though I came here as an aggressor, and the people who I injured have much difficulty in their living standards. 
I wish to express my deep gratitude for my kind treatment, and I will never forget this kindness extended to me.